Yeah. Hello again, it's me. Uh, it's Tim, hello. Uh, this is How to Murder Feet, my uh, ongoing sort of collection of holiday videos. Uh, and today I'm in Clacton on Sea, Clacton Pier. This is Tuesday the 25th of June. Yes, and it's about nine o'clock. Oh, hello, what have I done to the photo? Oh, there we go, yep. Um, yeah. So this is where I got to yesterday on my little four day away break. Uh, in a hotel, which is in that direction, uh, Walton on the Nays, uh, and I'm going to walk to the hotel today. Yeah, it was a good day today, transport-wise. One bus directly from outside my hotel at a reasonable hour. It was five minutes late, but yeah, I've, I wonder if Google's creating unreasonable expectations, to be honest, in uh, my timekeeping and public transport linkages and stuff, because it tends to plot to the minute, absolute with absolute precision, the local public transport timetables and networks. And then, of course, very few of the public transport networks actually honour that timetable. So, yeah, the bus this morning was five minutes late, but at least it existed. It hadn't been cancelled. Didn't have to get a cab. So that's all good. So, yes, yeah, starting out from here today, just going to walk north up the coast. It's going to be seafront promenading pretty much all the way. I'm not expecting any, like, waist-high weeds along the top of a long on top of an earthwork or anything like that so it's a bigger one today not too long either i think 13 miles maybe less i'm going to go round the naze at the far end as well and then i have to double back because there's no bus back from where i intend to stop but it's only about two miles from the hotel anyway so that's all fine yeah bearing up well enough <coughs> so let's crack on there we go parting shot of clacton pier yeah not bad i'd give that a solid seven out of ten pier on a pierometer <laughs> Classic of the type. Could, could do with some work and some, some renovation perhaps. But, uh, yeah, so there's the wind farm. I'm just curious as to what that small one in the middle is. I've been seeing that all day. I think it might be some sort of control tower. I don't know if it needs to be permanently manned though. It's probably all automated. Some sort of support structure. Right in the middle of the whole thing. It hasn't moved. It's not another boat. Just try zooming. Anyway, see how we see where we've got to and how we're doing. So here's the big plans. I started from Rowhedge two, two or three days ago and round into Brightling Sea and then yesterday was all around this nonsense and back to here. I did follow the dotted line in the end, there's no access on the main main part. Um yeah, point clear all the way around to Jaywick and then here we are today. New page. So this is ah, there's enough of a breeze to make paper awkward, but on the whole, generally, right there, whoa, extreme zooms. Um, yeah, so starting in Jaywick, we're on Clacton Pier just there, and we're moving up here. So Holland on sea, Frinton on sea, Walton on the Naze, and then today you're going to go round the Naze, which is the pointy bit here, uh, and then f finish up at Kirby Lee Soken today, and then tomorrow is the big push all the way along all this stuff up to Harwich, and that'll be the end of my week. Uh, yeah, so it's about 13 or 14 there, about 15 today, although all nice and straight and lots of facilities, no problems, I'm, sure I'm not expecting any anyway. Um, yeah, <clears throat> doing well. Uh, I'm feeling a bit achy, um, the hotel room's not great, uh, it has a window that doesn't close, so, and the road outside is quite quite loud until quite late at night. Um, but in, bear in mind I've tra I'm trading up from sleeping in a hedge with fear of trespass, being discovered trespassing, so it's all relative, I think. Probably give the hotel a, a solid 6 and 7 out of 10. But right, so yeah, not much going on at the moment, just joggers and fitness people early in the morning. Well, I'd say early, it's about half nine now, probably, 9.14. So yeah. Metal detector guy up and early there. Found early Romans, Roman burial hordes. Pound coins mostly, isn't it, from beach people. <laughs> but yeah, is that a wild camper? Red tent on the distance there. That's not me this week. <laughs> Although to be honest, this would be rather audacious. It's probably just homelessness, rather than any kind of adventurous expeditioning. Oh, right, yeah, I mean, it's getting hot today. Uh, there's a yellow heat warning for parts of the UK, but not here. Uh, I think that's mostly around London and uh, a big blob around that area where it might go up to 30 today. But today, 22, 23 here. Nice sea breeze keeping me cool all day because I'm, you know, facing onwards. You can see all the windmills. They're not moving very fast, but they are slowly turning, some of them. 
Uh, so it's a very light breeze, but it's going to be sort of coming more or less into my face as I head sort of northeast all, all day today. So that's all good. That's the day. I'm going to carry on. More beach huts. It's <coughs> quite a good photo, actually. So we're going to be seeing a lot of these today. It's all very, very sandy, beachy, holiday stuff along here today. Yeah, this is more like it. This is the <laughs> the England coast path. <laughs> Solid pavement along a load of beach huts. Golden sands. Nice weather. If only it were all like this. Actually, I think I'd probably get a bit bored if it was all like this. It's been like this for about three miles now. Or two miles, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> I guess it has to stop soon. At least not weed whacking or worrying about ticks or adders. So that's nice. Yeah. <clears throat> Clacton Heritage Trail, So I may be inadvertently following today. Number 15, I mean, there's about in here, we're nearly at the end of it. Holland on Sea, Clacton, here, yeah. Javik Sands, yeah, been there. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's quite different though, quite different to the salt marshes and estuary rivers, river banks I've been following so far. I mean, the sea defences are still here. They're a different shape now. They've got this concrete retaining stuff. Some of it a bit further back has got massive iron sheets trying to pin it to the cliff. It's a bit higher, sandier. I imagine this is not native. I don't think they import it with trucks or whatever. This is really sandy here. I mean, there's been very sand quarries in land I've been going past. Those big piles of rocks are artificial, obviously. Additional attempts to pin it all in place, stop it washing away. It's a very mutable coastline, and this is not yeah, man-made climate change or anything. This has probably been eroding away for tens of thousands of years. This is just the shape and the shape of the land and its composition and the nature of the sea. Relentless. Everything goes to sand in the end. Ah. But yeah, I'm just savouring the, the change in texture of it all now. This will continue all the way up to Walton probably, and then round the Nays it will go back to River Martians. River estuary salt marsh stuff again, I think, till Harwich. It's nice. It's just nice to be by the sea again, you know? I have the sea on my right hand side. As it has been most of the way from Minehead. Different seas as, as, the, as the journey's gone on, but all much of it, all much of this, all part of the same thing. It's great. Hmm. Not sure what I'm looking at there. Could be anything. I think that might be sea land. You have to look that up in Wikipedia. It's a uh, in, all, in name only micro nation built on the platform, built on some sort of World War II gun platform. Apparently, it has its own passports, currency, royal family, etc. <laughs> Population of zero. Don't think anybody actually lives on it. I think someone did briefly for a while in the 80s. I think that's out here. That might be it. Anyway, I take the uh, upper upper path for a bit of change in perspective. Just a pallet cleanse. Still following the sea though. Massive radar tower here. Seems to be in use. Got microwave relays on it. Okay, that's some part of our coast guard and warning defence thing and all the rest of it. Maybe there'll be a sign when I get a bit closer. Keep doing this. <laughs> Just wait till I get to the thing before I start telling you about it. Ooh, Rock of the Dead. AW Project Clearwater for cleaner beaches in Holland and Clacton. Oh, all right. They're celebrating a sewer that was built in 1997. Okay. Yeah, how's that all working out for you, water companies? <laughs> Nationalise the lot, I say. I think that's the end of that promenade anyway. We've got some good mileage in along there. It doesn't get that much more rugged or wild beyond here, to be honest. It's all quite tame, quite domestic, heavily defensive, defended seawall. That's, uh, yeah. Just keep cracking on. I've lost track of which villages I think I'm passing. I think that might have been Great Holland, or Holland on Sea, or something. The sort of Frinton somewhere up there, but, uh, yeah. No real rush today, no good early start. And my car is still parked at the hotel, so I don't even have to worry about car parks. Just 
chill and enjoy today. Try and go for a slightly, well, who am I kidding? I have one pace. That's part of the problem, I think, with the feet. And not to be able to do it slowly. Just I have a natural frequency of gait. Rhythm. I don't know if I can get down there. Let's try along the top for a bit more, really. That way I won't find myself cut off by sudden bays or whatever. Flex more uh, through throughput. Hmm. <coughs> Holland Haven marshes, apparently. It's a completely artificial landscape because this here <laughs> probably didn't exist at the turn of the century. I don't know. Massive concrete wall. Keeping the sea at bay. Quite an aggressively uh, tidal wall as well. The seaweed goes right up to the base. The uh, powers that be have determined a lot of manpower and resources to keep this area out of the sea. Seems fair. That's Frinton on sea, is it? Frinton something? Frinton on. Uh, the names are quite confusing here. Frinton something. Next major place, and then I think beyond that, Walton on the Nays. So, I don't know, it feels short today, although I have pegged myself down for 15 miles. I'm doing some after Walton as well, going up and around and coming back again, so we'll see. But, uh, <laughs> might be able to have a late afternoon stop in my hotel ensuite and then uh, use the facility, so it should be useful. <laughs> <coughs> so, here we still are. Got the sails out now. I can say it is a it is a Tuesday Tuesday morning midweek. I don't know. It's term, it's, no, schools are in because buses I got going to Clacton were full of school kids. So I guess they've not broken up for summer just yet. Good timing. <laughs> Mind you, the kinds of places I roam, it's quite rare that I get surrounded by holiday holiday making families. I pass through the occasional beach resort, but rarely stay long. It's fine. Ooh. Yeah, it's loving the ambiance. Yeah, the, the sea the sea, li the sea line, uh, seashore basic path there's gone now. There isn't one, but top of the walls, perfectly adequate. Good way to cover the miles. On to Frinton. Well, there we go on the horizon. That's Walton on the Nays Pier. Two piers in one day. I am spoiled. A little bit of haze there. So about four or five miles. Something like that. Anyway, it's Frinton. Frinton something something. Probably on sea. Most of the things are here. Yeah. Uh, some beach huts. A bit more civilization coming up. Let me stop for a drink. Get a lemonade. And we're doing 10.35. Quite early still, but... Uh, yeah, that's the sun of a much later time in the day. <laughs> I'll keep my fluids up. Good. Front and seafront. <laughs> Similar kind of thing. Although, yeah, I should I should make the most of this because I think this kind of this kind of landscape is going to become fewer and further between as I go north. Less and less traditional seaside towns separated by much, much longer stretches of not much at all. And Great Yarmouth, Skegness, I don't know, there's a few more, but uh, lots of in-between places as we go further north. This is all still really in the orbit of London, you know. It's a bit of a trek from London, but well, I don't know, it's only about an hour from the M25, so... Great seaside holiday resorts of the southeast. Yes, I think I'll be pushing into the uh, proper east soon as I cross into Suffolk. Which won't be this week, that'll be next week probably. Not next week, 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 yeah, next trip. Looking forward to it, to be honest. I've found Essex to be quite challenging <laughs> in various ways. I could believe it has the longest coastline of any English county. Just so much crinkly rivers. Salt marshes and the like. Ah, 
there, around the corner to Walton, there's the pier. Hotels are a couple of blocks further north. And that banked set of beach huts are the colours there. So we get a better look at that as we get closer. Fantastic. The pier, I haven't been on the pier yet, if I'm honest. I know I've been only like, you know, 200 metres north of it for the last, like, since since Sunday, but I haven't actually been on it yet. I've been just too too interested in just getting a pint in the bar below the hotel and then going up to my room to take my weight off my feet when I get back. So I'll have a proper look at it today. I mean, at the moment it's looking like a solid six though, I'm saying. I mean, there's not much faff, it's quite long, not a lot of faff on the end, but that sort of asbestos roofed barn type structure there is definitely taking it out of the big leagues. Well, we'll have a look, I'll have a proper close up look soon. Yeah, it's Walton already, I don't know, what is it? 11.24, yeah. Yeah, we're going about two and a half hours, that's about right. Good stuff, so about a third of the way through today's mileage, I think. Good, definitely time for a drink stop. There we are, another pier. So it looks a bit dark and gloomy in there, so I shall probably find the bar, have some drinks, and then talk to you on the other side, out, out, on, the, out on the sea seaward bit. It's that big amusement arcade in there. Actually, I'll take that all back. That's pretty well thought out in there. All, all the funfair rides, except this one here, are inside the big barn. It's quite roomy, it's quite spaced out, quite quite understated for these sorts of places, not all crammed together, lots of gaps between things. They've even got climbing walls down one side. Uh, it's a lot, lot less awful than I thought in there. There's a bowling alley on one side. I think they have to do the dodgems out here because they're a bit bigger and noisier. But And that leaves the pier itself for just contemplative strolling, you know? They don't cram all the rubbish on the far end. I thought I'd bring this one up to an eight, actually. It doesn't look much from the outside, but it's a very well thought out pier. So anyway, I'm going to the end. Talk to you when I get there. That's a shame. The end's closed. Pretty dangerous. Trouble is, a pier like this very expensive to maintain, I'd imagine. And this, I don't know. I wouldn't say bald and on the nose is on the rocks, but. Uh, Doubt they've got lots of spare money to splash around on this kind of thing, based on visitor numbers and such. So yeah, maybe a seven then this pier. They give it, give the roof a pressure wash, and I think I'd bring it another one up. Just looks a bit grubby from the outside. I guess that's pretty much outside their control, really. I don't know where you get the money for for that kind of thing. Yeah, right. Let's find some lemonade. So that's my hotel, actually. Centre a shot with the grey and white rectangular frontage. Sort of dark grey, white panel, and straight middle. The Royal Albion. Functional, I think, is the word I'd use. A bit like a travel lodge, but the building's older. <laughs> it's okay. Does me alright as a base of operations for my local roaming. Anyway, so today, carrying on past there, might pop in and use my ensuite toilet. Uh, and then off around the end, that is the Naze. It's like the pokey outy bit to the north of Walton on the Naze. Goes round with a big loop, comes back down the other side, about half a mile through those houses and stuff. And then I'm just going to carry on a little bit to Kirby, Lee Soken, Thorby, Lee something or other. I keep forgetting the names. Uh, and then walk back from there to the hotel. Uh, I'd say we're about two thirds of the way done today then. Maybe, maybe halfway. No, that does go around quite a fair way a bit, so it's not all done out of the woods today. But uh, yeah, I need to find lemonade now, I think. That's what I need. Sit in a pub for a bit. It's been a great day so far. One of those one of those days on... I mean, I have good days and bad days on this trail, on this project, you know. But this is one I'll remember fondly. Just a sunny day in the middle of summer, wandering past multicoloured beach huts. Pretty much. Nothing went seriously wrong, no catastrophes happened with the transport, I didn't throw my rucksack in a river, you know. It's another good, it's just a good day so far, one I'll remember well. Right, onward. Yeah, there it is. I'm on the far end, at the top. With a window that doesn't shut on that busy road. That's alright, it, it calms down, you know, 11-ish. 
Oh, a two star in it says on the side. Yeah, <laughs> seems fair. Right. Still looking for that pub with the lemonade. I don't want to go in the hotel bar because I'm going to be in there tonight. It starts to look a bit needy. Oh, I'll get some effort on one of these, why not? Good. So I'm pretty sure that is sea land. It's in the right kind of direction and I think it's the right sort of distance. It's about eight miles away, five to eight miles away from here. The funny thing being is that when it was established, these ex-military, ex they abandoned it and somebody else took it over privately. And when they did that, it was beyond the three, at the then three mile international, international water boundary. Basically everything three miles off the shore belongs to a country. If it's outside three miles, it's in international waters, doesn't belong to anyone. But then, since, so they since started on passports, currency, etc. Call it a principality of Sealand. And then, at some point since then, it um, the law changed and, it's, and they moved the boundary to 12 miles, which makes that well and truly inside British territory now. Still, a bit of a meme state. You can find Wikipedia and they've got their own website and everything. I don't even think you can visit it. It's a quite dangerous, abandoned, derelict platform. I just take the photo at 100 times zoom and it's a much clearer shape but the two the two round sort of structures on each side two legs it stands on relatively shallow sea there i think they're on the bottom you can find out a lot more on wikipedia there's like a flat platform with a like a shack on the top in the middle <laughs> fantastic ah, right anyway back to uh back to the shore gosh let's find a more comfortable zoom level shall we there we go circus is in town i ain't got time for that i'm off I'm going that way until this all runs out and then I think we're back onto sea walls again about earthwork dikes and uh, follow that round and back down the other side to Kirby Lee Soken, not Thorpe Lee Soken. It's two very similar names, two very similar unlikely names. Um, yes, let's go that way. That'd be two lemonades, I'm good to go. kids with stripy red and white poles and clipboards down there, some kind of beach ecology survey I guess. Seems to remember doing something vaguely similar on the occasional trip in my school. I imagine we were quite far from the coast. Oh, right, I think I'm going to run out of promenade soon. I think we run out of pavement up here. Down there looks like the beach that's all stop on that breakwater. I think we might be looking for cliff top trails and things back to the uh, back to the usual I think. But this has been nice. So it's been a nice diversion. Back onto the normal coast path. We'll see. Top of the hill, the Naze, as they call it. It's the Naze Tower, beyond the uh, cafe. I haven't seen a sign yet, so I couldn't tell you anything about its provenance. It's kind of Victorian, Napoleonic, maybe. Perhaps a bit earlier. Who knows? <clears throat> well, I mean, lots of people know I don't. That's the key. Lots of geography field trips around. Nice tower. No, can't really read much of this. It's fine. Visitor centre, etc. No, I'm going to keep on going. That's the nice tower. Which is a cafe itself. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we're going all around the end. Let's see what we can see. Ah, we can see a large amount of large amounts of industrial shipping container port cranes. That is Felix Day. That's on the other far side of Harwich and the Harwich. Keep calling it Harwich, like an American would. Um, yeah, Felix Day International Shipping Port. We're not going there this week. In fact, we're probably not going there until the end of next trip because that involves, that's the far end of a lot of inland detouring nonsense. Yeah, we'll get more of that as we get nearer. Yeah, there's a path down there, but it sort of goes to the end and stops. So we're, we're going to use the top here, I think, as a way of progressing. But yeah, day mark, if nothing else. But then any big towers are day mark, as we, incidentally. I don't, know, I don't think it was ever a lighthouse. Yeah. 
highly untypical local terrain this I'm not going to get too close to the edge we've seen a lot of this around um, Dorset south coast of Dorset it's kind of red mud collapsing um, yeah no, it's, it's basically what the naze is made of that's why this is a hill here and uh, the rest of it's all flat salt marshes yeah, anti-Spaniard early warning system there Ooh. yeah unusual unusual to be on a hill at all to be honest this part of the world that's what the naze is, it's a sort of anchor I suppose that keeps a lot of the rest of the inland landscape washing away. No need for sea walls here, this is quite high up. 100 metres or so maybe. Vantage point doesn't really help a lot, there's just nothing out there. If you go that way far enough you'll hit Holland I suppose, Denmark, Sweden, Norway. But yeah, quite a crossing. I think the car ferries that run from Harwich to to the Netherlands is are, uh, I think it's about an eight hour trip from, from there. I think they run from there. We'll see, we might see some of those as we go. Big boats. I think most of the stuff anchoring out beyond the wind farm is waiting for a go at Felix though. Which we'll see more of as we go. Now I'm hoping there's a path onward now out, out the far end of here because that's kind of where I need to be next. That looks promising. It's almost taking time to concrete along here. This might be the path I need. I think I'm on the right path. It's quite complicated because it's like a country park with lots of hundreds of crisscrossy paths going all over around the place. And I'm just passing through really. I just need one path. Oof, that's quite campable, look at that. So I hadn't really thought about the camping because I only planned up to Clacton. This is all new now, all new territory. I haven't done the staging really, and well, staged this particular trip for, for, for hotels and bus stops and things. But yeah, that would be a nice spot. Assuming we're not still inside the park. We'll get hurried, hurried out of here, it's a bit, it's a bit blatant. But delicious woodland glade there, lovely. Yeah, so let's follow this long and see if it ends up on the seawall on the tip. Oh, look at that, that's quite campable too. In fact, there is even a fire pit there, look. Someone's already been at a, bump, at a campfire here. Yeah, oh yeah, you could put a tent here. Although I suspect as you get right close, that is crumbling brown mud right at the edge. Nice spot though. Yeah, I'm on a beach down there. Yeah, it's crumbly brown mud. That would be a bit further back, I'd say. Probably here. This looks ideal. But uh, I'm just walking through today. So yeah, let's follow this round. Obviously, we are paralleling the cliff edge, so that's good. I think we're on the right track. This way. Yeah, we are. This is all looking familiar. We are some sort of sea wall. Oh yeah, there's like. Oh, I see, yeah, wire mesh boxes of rocks, wire mesh over there, packaging, obviously in the progress of filling them and trying to, trying to stabilise this a bit. But this looks quite familiar, got a footpath on top of this one. But yes, it's the old Essex seawall again. That's okay, right, look at this, look at this view. This is a whole new horizon, I'm very pleased. I always, it's always a special moment for me when I come over a hill or go around a headland and see the next day or two's hiking laid out in front of me across the bay around the curve so yeah that's Felix Day with the big unmissable cranes and whatnot I think Harwich is just this side over here I mean Felix though is on the river it's a stour I think it's a stour I don't know uh, which goes inland and then forks and does two big inland other rivers which I'm going to zigzag my way in and out of over the next trip, which will be, I think, four days looking at the mileages and stoppings and so on. So that'll be a separate four-day trip. I don't know, September maybe, perhaps sooner. Depends how I'm feeling, depends what the scheduling's looking like. Well, I haven't got a lot else on, so <laughs> still got some holiday to burn at work. Anyway, not worried about all that for now. Felix Stowe will wait. That's what I am worried about, well, not worried, is, is all of the stuff in between, because I think I go to Harwich, which is just this side, probably obscures the secondary set of cranes. Harwich just slightly to the near side. So all of this is tomorrow. Get better view as we get to the end of this path, I think. Oh, another one for my scrapbook of very straight paths. Hang on. Hmm. Yeah, I thought that pavement was a bit too good to last. 
we go down here now, which doesn't look too bad actually. Certainly the path in the middle seems used, seems trampled. That's good. Anyway, we've got to cut inland now. Off that tantalising glimpse of distant vistas across gleaming yellow beaches. We are now going that way because that is a massive old marsh that uh, it's no good for me. It's got like a, it's a, a whole island in there with causeway access. I think it might be private, might be an OD. I don't know. Anyway, my path takes me back here in a big loop that will eventually bring me back more or less to the back end of Walton on the nose. And then I'm going to do a few more extra miles up to the next village along and then turn around and head back to the hotel. So that's the plan. But yes. Back to the inland creeks and salt marshes for a bit now until we come out the other side over there somewhere on that far shore and then follow that all the way up tomorrow. That's the plan anyway. So uh, yeah, a remote getaway spot. This is good. Nice sandy beaches and not many people about. I almost feel like I'm intruding. Right, let's crack on through here then. Back to this kind of nonsense for a bit now. Watch out for adders. Oh, given up on the top, it's just too overgrown and uh, those things are quite resilient. It's hard to bash out of the way. This is a bit better, some people have obviously been through here, but uh, still hard going. We've got to concentrate as well. Got no one for adders and uh, bad footing. Thankfully I'm still just about keeping a breeze across the here, so that's okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know what temperature it is. I said it was going to be about 22 about now, so yeah, I need to be careful. So another look at the top, maybe it's improved. See what I mean anyway. No, that's not improved. I mean, there's evidence some people have been trying to bash it down through here, but not many. Uh, that's the other side. Yeah, it's all just mud. That's no good either. Uh, right, back down then. Yeah, that grass is my best bet down there. It's still not carefree pavementing, but... Uh, and it's a bit easier going than up there, certainly. Don't know, I think it just gets a bit muddy down there as well. No, this looks like my best bet. Quite a long way as well, about a mile of this to do, I think. So let's just head down, trudge on. It stops for water often. I want to become another summer related outdoor statistic. I made it to the corner, heading south next. That has to be one of the least accessible signboards I've seen on this entire trail. Let's have a quick look so we can get there. Careful, careful. Climbing. Up onto what should be the path, so adequate maintenance, push through some of this. Uh, yeah, I don't know where he's camping here. Uh, yeah, they put this up and they never came back, clearly. Litching all over it. Walton backwaters. Salt marsh and mud flats. Oh, Essex is slowly sinking as well. That's not helpful. <laughs> Storms pound the big waves, okay. Mm. <sighs> Good. All right, well, I probably won't be. I'll probably be back down there again to continue south. The channel, there's a load of marinas and things on the other side down that way. I don't think I can get onto that peninsula. I've had a look. I might have to just do an inland detour and cut that whole chunk off. Despite it potentially being navigable, I just don't think there's a path there. Be some problems tomorrow. Well, not problems, just opportunities to shortcut boring bits I don't want to do. <laughs> uh, okay, right, I'm going to stop here and have a sit down for a bit and have some water and watch the little sailing boats go by. And then I'll steal myself for another solid push. Another mile, I think, that way through there. Well, they're probably down there. Quite inaccessible, this spot. Which would have made it ideal for wild camping, I guess. Oh, not seeing anybody on this leg, no. <laughs> right, good, good. You're doing it the easy way. I 
at the wings. I don't want to make too much noise because if he, if he takes off, I'm never going to be able to track him. Fantastic glittery wings though. That one's quite subtle colour actually, that one is all bright blue like some I've seen. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, that's rather optimistic. <laughs> uh, this has become manageable again up top, so. But um, yeah, I don't think you really need to try and keep mountain bikes off here. <laughs> ah, right, so. Nearly there, going to sweep around across here a bit. Another, another loop, another side of a channel. And then it's back round onto the main road. And at that point, I think I'm going to change my plan because my hotel is basically less than half a mile that way. And rather than go two miles up there and then turn around and come back and go to the hotel, I might as well just tack those miles on tomorrow and start from the hotel uh, tomorrow. Although I will have to have driven my car and parked it at Harwich and then come back to the hotel via public transport. So still not going to be quite as easy as it could be. I don't dare try using public transport to get back to the hotel from Harwich because I don't know what time I'm going to get there and if it's late. These buses aren't terribly reliable at the best time. So I think my best plan is to park the car at the finish just so that I can finish whenever I like, take as long as I like. And then just muck about with some public transport in the morning. But, uh, Yes, yeah, so that'll take about two miles off this day and add them to tomorrow, but that only brings tomorrow up to about 16, so I've done that already this week a couple of times. Not a problem. Seems to make more logistical sense, so you just need to finish this little loopy bit and find the road. Nope, not that way then, clearly. All that way. It's quite spiky. I think I'm over there. Echo land here. You can see the circus tent from, from earlier. Just through there, that's the seafront the other side. Gone all the way around. Basically ended up at the same place. That happens far too often in my adventures. Anyway, so follow this round, it loops, eventually comes back to a main road. And I'll just follow it along a bit and then uh, draw a line in the sand there. Carry on with all that tomorrow. Yeah, see, to that new housing development there. North of there, there's no footpath along that side of the bank at all. So it's a whole great peninsula that I just can't, can't cut. It can't basically can't travel around the arena at the end. I'm gonna have to just cut that whole peninsula off and just go along the main road. So do that tomorrow, and then see where we end up next. But yeah, plus the sun's got a got a hammer today. I think I might want to spend the rest of the day under shelter. This is the uh, end of the path then. Some sort of disco going on there. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a tiny bit that goes along that bank up to that boatyard and then stops, but otherwise it's back out that way and onto the roads and find a way through till we get to something better, which we shall do tomorrow. So I'm going to basically go back into Walton and work back to the hotel and spend the rest of the day in the shade because it's starting to get to me a bit. <laughs> I think I've got a heat stroke, but you know, it doesn't do to experiment. Um, yeah, I shall probably be somewhere around here tomorrow and we can pick up and finish the last day. But until then, uh, see you later.